Hey everyone, welcome to A Great Alternative. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make this foraged forest wreath. First of all, you need to gather all your materials. So I have a mixture here of basically things that I could forage from the forest. We've got a mixture of willow, that's the bulk of what I'll be making this out of today. There's also a bit of hazel in here. There's beech. Generally, I've gone for things that I know to be quite flexible because, like I say, the majority of the wreath will make up that kind of stuff. And then this bag is basically the extra bits and pieces that are kind of the more decorative to it. Decorative? The decorative. One moment. I've got Echo with me today. I'm here at Glanshaven Mansion because, if you don't know already, we live in a caravan, so I have to find weird and wonderful places to come and film these videos. In doing a bit of a bartering system, so take some photos of this mansion, I've been given access to come here and film these videos. So you may see Echo, hopefully, just lying down in front of the fire. Or maybe not. Anyway, where were we? So, the decorative pieces. Things like this, which is honeysuckle. I'll put some images on screen of the foraging that I've done to find a lot of these pieces. So honeysuckle and vines, you're looking for things that are hanging from the tree. You don't want to take it from right on the tree because it will have attached itself, but you want the stuff that is just hanging down. I love this because it kind of, it's, it's weird and one it's kind of all knotted and I oh, love it. Then there's things like this, which is beach. We have bits and pieces like this, which I believe is large, I think. We've got things like spruce. I believe this is Norway spruce, but don't correct me on that. That's def but it's definitely a type of spruce. We've also got Douglas fir as well, which that's what this basket's made out of. Mmm, beautiful kind of citrus smell, Douglas fir. And then, yeah, more vine and more bits and pieces like that. But materials, this is what we've got. Use nature to just fuel your creativity, find, th find textures, find things that will, will wrap within one another. I don't expect to use all of this, but I think it's a good start. So, first of all, I need to get rid of most of this stuff because I basically need to make my willow ring. Okay. Magic of television. This is a goat willow. What I'm going to potentially do here will either be with this type of willow, which where I forage this, I'll show on screen again now, it's where a tree that's fallen over, just enough of the tree has survived so that it's fallen over like this and then it sends up loads of different shoots. These are examples of those shoots. That's just come straight from the main branch, which is why they don't, they don't have too many shoots like this at the end and also why it's a fairly nice, straight, long piece. This has probably come out of the side of a tree, which is like, which is why it's bent slightly. First of all, we need to make our initial circle. So I've got here some of my longer pieces of willow. All this that I'm using here is green material. So therefore, what I mean by that is this was harvested or foraged uh, two days ago. So I'm going for something that's not too big today because I got caught out yesterday and I went and I made this, pro this basket it took me all day and I was planning to do half a day doing a project. So therefore, that's the plan today is that this is going to be not too big for that reason. Just start last time, same again. Start there and then just bend this in. Obviously, I'm leaving these bits here. I don't have to do that, but for now I'm leaving them because the idea is that I, I do want to leave a lot of this stuff. Plus, another thing that I'm doing is I, I could really try and get this right round and tight, right, sort of squeeze it in so that it, the wrapping is as tight as possible, which um, potentially might make it stronger, but I don't necessarily want to do that now for this because my plan is that's all these little holes that I'm creating. So for example, like, this hole here. All these little holes that I'm creating by wrapping this round and round, that's what I'm going to attach um, things with later on. Because in my research, um, again, quick introduction, I'm a beginner at a load of this. This is the first time I've created this project and that's what these videos are. They're kind of proof that beginners can do this stuff. 
And in my research, you get a ring like this. Sometimes it's like a, like a florist's foam or something that you then basically get small pieces of the stuff. You attach it to it and you tie wire, normally metal wire around, can be twine. And you tie it around, touch a piece, tie it around, touch a piece, tie it around, and then you end up with your wreath. What I would like to do is kind of prove to myself really that this can be done with only free forageable materials that anyone can get their access uh, get access to depending on obviously where you are you know you might not get access to the same plants but you can probably get access to wonderful plants that i can't get access to but the but the idea is that we can get this for free and we can do all of this stuff without having to use metal and other bought materials <coughs> I apologise everyone, my voice, I'm just getting over a cold and uh, that's why my voice is a bit croaky. I'm going to try and cut out any coughing that I do do because um, you don't want to hear that, but just in case, I apologise. So for now, all I'm going to be doing is building that up, same, going in the same direction using my willow pieces because I'm going to have willow as the base. And then what I'm going to try and do is, as you can see, I've started here. I'm going to try and make it so that there's little bits of willow sticking out all the way around and I'm building this up. Okay. Time lapse time. Time for an important break. Right, so we've got the willow wreath done. I've gone through all my materials and I've separated different bits and pieces out. Next, what I wanna do is just build up some of the bulk. So I'm gonna use this stuff here, some beech, and some of these gnarly little bits of hazel. There's a couple of beech in there as well, uh, but mainly the hazel as well. The way I'm gonna attach most of this is by basically just kind of trying to tuck it in and stick it into areas of the wreath that I've already made here. Because I want to stress again, this is an example of something that you can do without having to use glue or wires or other things that you might have to buy from a craft shop. This is, the experiment for today is to try and make something that purely, you can just go out in the woods, find a load of materials and make yourself a wreath. Something else to add, I'm sure it's an obvious one that you all know anyway, but don't forage intensely from one area. I did this from a woodland that's, I don't know, 10 acres, and I was just a bit of, bit of plant here and a bit of their tree there, and then another bit of tree there. And you know, it's not like all the hazel came from one hazel tree. It came from all kinds of different places. Plus, that's part of kind of forest bathing, getting out there, exploring, and just being part of nature. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's now I'm finding I'm like a, kid in a candy store, you know, in the, you walk into the woodlands and you're just like, oh, how could I use that material? And, oh, wow, how could you use that? And just, yeah, let it fuel your creativity. And at the same time, inevitably, you will learn and kind of, I think, you know, respect and appreciate the materials and, and the plants and the, and the forest as a whole even more. So I don't think it's a bad thing. Get out there, create some art, do some stuff. This is where it might be really handy if you had a bodkin. Note to Jason, get a bodkin. If you don't have a bodkin, then you need a pointy stick because you need to get yourself some hole, get yourself a hole to stick things into. There we go. So what I've ended up doing 
is I quite quickly started to realise that there wasn't enough to fill out the whole way round. So this is where I'm going to start filling in certain areas with different textures and materials. And then, as you can see, I've just started here. Just started here. Let me show you this close up. I'm starting to add, it, add in extra bit and bits of ridges and bits of texture and uh, the kind of knobbly bits that stick out. I'm trying to still stay on just this plane so it just so I'm not coming out backwards because I'm bearing in mind this is going to end up on a wall so I'm either coming out forward or to the side I'm basically using bits like this and by using bits like this I'm just sticking it in at one end so I want that to end up being about there-ish so just find a hole to put that in And then get roughly where you want that to be, yeah, around, around there, I think. Find the other hole. And there you go. Next, I'm going to continue, just keep building it up, keep building it up. Thinking always about kind of overall how you want certain textures to be. Keep stopping, taking a look and being like, okay, is that is that, that way around? Do I want do I want to add more on one side? It's just about playing. Okay, keep going. It's like this, look at this, not only piece there. I have a feeling um, this is going to be another full day project because I'm just getting carried away. So far I've been doing this for about four hours-ish, give or take, maybe three and a half. I'm just going to keep going. Did you say time for another coffee and a biscuit? I've been trying to build up some of this bit in here. I'll show it to the camera some of the, in, some of the inside. I'm trying to kind of make it sort of come to life, you know, things that, like this bit, this sectional here is twixted, I deliberately, by weaving it, kind of, when I first, when I weave the thicker end in, I start higher on this side rather than on this side, so it comes out and then that means you'll get sections like this or like this, whereas if I was kind of wrapping it, they might get hidden, so that's, that's kind of what I realised is because I was doing that here on some of these, um, some of these back bits and obviously we're not going to really end up seeing too much of that especially all around here so you kind of want to create similar effect um, in here and it's bringing that bringing bringing things out I think next is this stuff the honeysuckle I don't want to if, if I was to kind of work with it quite a lot you can see it really you can get it right off as you can can you see there started to peel away and come off quite quick. If you wanted to make some natural cordage, that's what you'd do, is you'd peel that straight off and then quite quickly you get through to the green kind of um, stuff underneath. But I then, I don't think I want that. I don't want to reveal too much of this green stuff. I kind of like it looking like this. So I'm going to still not necessarily really kind of try and rag this too much for that reason. Okay. <laughs> Coffee on the table. Who would do such a thing? On a piece like this, I should be able to weave it like normal. The piece that I just had, had like two bits sticking out, which obviously that made it, would make it difficult to um, weave through stuff. But this one, as long as sort of every two weaves, I'm kind of going through something to just help it kind of hold itself in place. 
I think it'll be okay. in so don't worry too much if you do happen to I was gonna say make a mistake or snap a branch or pour coffee all over yourself it's just part of the process Still not sure which way up it should go. <laughs> With some of these, I'm not even, I've not got long enough to actually weave it. So it's literally just that amount. So I just need to stick it in the once and uh, that generally should hold it in place. After it come up, grab, and then push, otherwise, ah, stop it, me. <laughs> Next, I've got these, which is the end of willow. What I'm gonna do, instead of, I've got these so that they could be woven all the way through if I needed, but what I think I'm gonna do instead is literally snip it right near the end, like that, and just kind of boop, put them in, as if it's a bit more, like a general, your, your bog standard kind of floral wreath and just kind of get sections. So it looks like it's coming out of just that one bit. Trying to give you different angles of ways of me showing you how I'm doing, but you know, there's just, just sticking it in, weaving it in and trying to get it nice and tight. <laughs> So these are very final pieces that are going to be very delicate. So first of all, I'm just trying to lay them out, figure out where I want that piece of green. Nice, I like it, I like it. Someone's getting antsy, she wants to go home. I'm not finished yet. I think I'm finished. So, to hang this up, literally put it into a nail, or you could get some string. It could also be used as a table piece. You know, there's nothing stopping you putting a bunch of candles and different bits and pieces in there. But there we go, foraged forest wreath. But before I go, if you're at all interested, I've got videos on how I made this, which is a random weave Douglas fir basket. Smells amazing. How I made this, which is a random weave shopping basket. Or this, which is a Catalan tray. I'll leave links to them at the end, as well as the weaving playlist that I'm starting that's now, you know, got a fair few. Um, and again, thank you so much. Please like, subscribe, share, all of that kind of stuff. Hopefully my voice won't be so croaky in the next one. So I'm going to go home, have a hot honey and lemon, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Right. Cheers, everyone. Bye.